And happy 30th anniversary to Prep Football Report. I'm Tommy Williams, and wasn't it your job to watch Joe Redondo this week? I thought so, but <laughs> I, I, I fell asleep. I'm sorry. I, I, and so did he, because he's not going to be here today. He has some personal business to take care of. And man, another football season to take care of, man. Looking it is forward to beautiful it. outside. It's going to be a great night tomorrow night for football, and uh, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. And the traditions continue. He has his top ten game of the week, the whole nine yards. <clears throat> Excuse me. We hit up. Yeah, I get choked up when we talk football. What can I tell you? <laughs> also, we'll have a game of the week that we'll talk about. So we're going to be awfully busy today. Yep. So let's get started with it. Sounds like a winner. You stick around. We'll be right back with Prep Football Report right here. From the perfect flip to the perfect pass, we power Northern Indiana so you can do what moves you. football season gets underway tomorrow night. It's our job to make sure you're prepared for it on Prep Football Report, and I believe we're going to start off with players to watch, correct? Yeah, you know, all the teams in the area lost a large number of really great players, and uh, all the teams are going to be in the same boat. They're going to have to kind of work through the people who contributed last year, and we have a number of those people that we kind of want to watch this season and see how they mature and develop. Okay, and by the way, before we get to that, who do you think was hurt the most by graduation? That's a good question because, very honestly, I thought that there were quite a few schools that did lose significant pe people. Lowell could be one of them. Mm -hmm. They lose their quarterback and their running back and, and the number of you know players there. Um, so it's going to be a test for a lot of teams this year to try to fill the gaps. And we'll talk about that as the season goes on. All righty then, let's say we get to it. Now this is a list of just some of the players this year that I thought kind of jumped out at me mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, uh, contributing last year and probably developing this. C.J. Opperman and uh, Cooper Jones for Valparaiso. They were good last year. They're going to be better this year. Uh, Opperman did a nice job at quarterback, and Jones is a big boy on defense. Opperman, I believe, was the number three guy with Valpo and has now worked himself up to the top. That's guy. right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Eric uh, Whitehead uh, from Maryville with their starting quarterback last year. Now, I know I've heard that there's competition, but Whitehair, Whitehead has the experience. I think he's going to take that over. And this Mark Wynn Hurt, he's a defensive player, a uh, linebacker, mm -hmm. um, and I think that he's going to really stand out this year. At least that's what Phil Mason thinks. What if Phil Mason says yeah, that's right. granite. <laughs> <laughs> And we've got... Um... By the way, getting on... The... Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, we're, we're all right, we've now. got uh, Michael Bradford. He is Michigan City's quarterback from last year. Little inexperienced last year. Now he's come in, and uh, he's got some experience, so he's going to be good. This Armani Glass, um, he's a wide receiver from Maryville. When you get Whitehead and Glass, who know each other, who played together last year together, and Glass has speed to burn. That's a good combination. I noticed you have two Andrian players there. We talked about the guys that aren't coming back, including that superstar quarterback of theirs from last season. You got a couple of kids from Andrian that can pick that offense up. Boy, Nicky Flesher, Flesher uh, he, he contributed in basketball and baseball, but he's a heck of a wide receiver. He's got speed, and uh, you know he's got uh, a good instinct. Ryan Walsh is a bruising running back and linebacker for them. But a key, Tommy, for them also is J.J. Wattis, mm -hmm. the kicker there. A four-year kicker, he is outstanding. You mentioned about all the great things about Nick Fletcher. Let us not also forget, he's got two rings on his finger. Yes, he does. He had one heck of a baseball slash basketball season. That's right. Yeah. Uh, John Alicia, I, I just marvel at this young man. 
He played quarterback when uh, Ethan Igress was hurt mm -hmm. for Lowell. He's their best wide receiver, and he's a outstanding defensive back. I think he parks cars and sells popcorn. <laughs> he's amazing, I'll tell you. Uh, Will Pennant, what, what a great stock he comes from. Chip is his father. He is a quarterback also, and he is a junior now. He's got experience, and uh, over the summer, he has progressed. You got a couple of kids from Morton there, and I had a chance to watch them sort of practice uh, uh, last week. And you got a couple of kids there that can really make hay, and Morton might finally jump that hurdle as far as elite football teams. I, I agree, because one thing you have to have in high school is a quarterback. Yeah. And Prather is outstanding. Now, he does have a wide receiver, JoJo Johnson, and uh, Johnson is quick, and he can stretch the field. I think Morton has a team. I've heard that their offense, defensive lines, both of them are huge. And JoJo Johnson, I know this is weird, saying this about a city team, he might be the best of the bunch. Yep, I totally agree. With bunch of Division be. One schools interested That's in That's right. Yeah. Continue, sir. Uh, Zach uh, Warchus uh, is from Portage. He played quarterback last year and uh, he did a nice job for them. And Scott Hansen for Portage is their running back and defensive player. Uh, I think Portage is going to be a lot better this year. And uh, they're a team to watch, I think. And Ryan Turley he comes from the Turley breed, right? Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. His dad was coaching Hobart and now he's a linebacker for them. And, and really, a lot of people like him the way he's playing right now. And this next guy, Brayton Van is unbelievable. You watch him this year. He, Everybody thought he was the best player in the area last year. Mm -hmm. You wait this year. He's gained strength and speed. I'm really looking for what he can do. And when you go back to Portage. Yes. They did pretty good when he had a pretty darn good quarterback a yep. couple of years ago. Yep. Now they've got a quarterback that you feel is one of the players to watch, so right. watch out for the Indians this I year. I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Continuing. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that we're now going to right. uh, a little five if we uh, oh, okay, read that right. Oh, so let's go to the little five this year. First little five. I like Boone Grove to start off the season number one. They could have been in our top ten because of Brand, Van, uh, Brand uh, who, I'm sorry, Brayton Van. Right. They could have been in the top ten. But I think they lo they lose their quarterback. Mm -hmm. They did have a good one though. Jay Mayerski. Uh, Mayerski last year was their top receiver and they, their top defensive player. Now he's shifting over to quarterback. Rensselaer is always tough. The Bombers are ready to play. They've got their quarterback, um, Elijah Hickman, back, and they've got a, a young man named Jackson, um, don't tell me, Jackson Hughes. He's a heck of a, a running back from last year. Hanover Central has their quarterback, Tyler Fueling, back, so that's good for them. They've mm -hmm. got Brett Driscoll, yeah. okay, who plays both ways, offense and defense. Not the biggest kid in the world, but nope. he is a tough Oh, son he's of got the guy. biggest heart in the exactly. world, I'll tell you right there now. There you go. I like Bowman. I like the fact that they've got George Johnson, who was one of the top five quarterbacks last year. Mm -hmm. And they've got a running back, uh, Javante uh, Hurt, who was just outstanding last year for them. If they get, if they can get some line play, they're going to be tough. That's the key. When they go up against teams that have big line, lines, they don't do well. Right. If they could get halfway decent line play, they could be pretty good this right. year. Yep. And I like Winnemac. Uh, they've always had a strong program. They've got their quarterback, Keith Ville, back. Uh, but uh, I like Knox in there, too. You, know, mm. you, you can't, uh, I, could only put, I could only put five. <laughs> so, but Knox is going to be pretty good, too. Okay, now let's say we move on to the Big Ten, if you will. Wayne Spetnoff's top ten teams in the region. We'll start at number 10, and uh, I know people are going to say, what? Why they ain't number 10 in the big boys? What are you talking about? They've got a new coach. You know, it doesn't matter. Whiting just retools. They've got plenty of talent there. They do have their quarterback, Steve Conley, back. But and no they, Nino Maggio. Yes. They're, and still you got him at 10. That's right. Well, they, I mean, they're good. Yeah. And I don't know if uh, we'll have to see how good they're going to be. I like Hobart. I like Hobart because Again, Hobart has um, Riley uh, Johnson, their quarterback, and they've got Turley on defense. 
Uh, so I like them at 10. There's Portage there. We've talked about them at number eight. Uh, we've talked about Morton, mm -hmm. and I'm really, I really am looking forward to seeing what Morton can do this year. I think they can move themselves up with all due respect to the teams ahead of them. They can move themselves up to at least number four this year. Well, that's Potential. a certain possibility. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how Crown Point comes along. You know, Will Pettit, an excellent athlete. They've got other athletes there. Uh, and actually, Crown Point, from what I read in the paper, mm -hmm. uh, played very well against Penn in De their scrimmage. Defensively. Yes. Shut them down. So, and that's Crown Point's forte, their yeah. defense. Mm -hmm. um, Lowell, I think that, the, you know, you've got to, who's going to fill in other than Alicia? And that's the big question. You yeah. lose uh, Wildman, who's a core, their running back, linebacker. I agree. You lose Igress, mm -hmm. you know, their quarterback and safety. And uh, they lose some other people. It's going to be a good game this week between Lowell and, and uh, Crown Point at the Inferno. But what did you say earlier about reloading? Yes. That's what Lowell does. Yes, they, they do. They do tend to reload, yes, so they they're going to be a tough egg to crack again this year. And Drayan. Yes, they lose Zach Merrill. I understand that. He was an outstanding, standing quarterback. But they have talent there at Andrean. Flesher is one, you know, on the wide receiver uh, uh, part. Um, you know, you've Wattis. got uh, Wattis and you've got uh, Walsh, mm -hmm. okay, and they've got a quarterback who's a senior, Noah Hamilton, who transferred in from Lake Central. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, you know, if you can put that together, you know they're going to be big on the lines, and you know they're going to be fast. So, can you say Wattis and Walsh five times fast? Well, Never mind. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. We've got uh, Maryville. Boy, you're talking about a plethora of mm, athletes there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. From what I've heard, they are stacked. Yes. Yeah. And they've got a huge offensive line. they got a young man uh, named Mar um, Marcus Lewis. Mm -hmm. He's only 6'7", 320. And then colleges are salivating already for this young man. Are you talking about college basketball or football? Football. Oh, okay. Oh, Just yeah. checking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, he could be, uh, I guess. Uh, you could be uh, Zion Williamson. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, you never that's know. Right. Yeah. He gone short, I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Uh, Michigan City is number two. And then you got Velpo Rezo. I really think Velpo with Jones and Opperman. I think that they're going to be a very, very tough team this year. They open up with Penn. Yeah. And Penn certainly wasn't showing anything, you know, this last scrimmage against Crown Point. But still, you know the key here? Mm -hmm. Two things, two big things that we'll talk about all season long. Number one, Velpo drops down to number five, mm -hmm. cl uh, class 5A. Mm -hmm. And Andrean mm -hmm. drops down to 2A. Two two a. Those are going to be big, significant things. Well, there you go, folks. And again, you can sit back. Remember this poll after tomorrow because you and I will be doing radio tomorrow, That's right? That's right. So right if you here. want to call in and let him have it if he's wrong, you can you can do that. He can take it. Game night on Lakeshore. There you go. That's we right. start at 6 p.m. Yes, we there do. There you go. Exactly. So much for that. Now it's time now for Rivalry Rush as we get you ready for our number one matchup of the week. That will be Lowell going up against, Come and I just point. forgot. Crown Point. Crown Point. I just forgot the team that I covered yesterday. <laughs> anyway, we will kick it off with Lowell and see what they have to say about this week one matchup. The old leather helmet's a uh, little trophy we play Crown Point for every year. Coach Reed, who was a former old line coach here, came up with the idea when he went to Crown Point to coach with them. And it's been that trophy that we've been battling for for about the last 20 years. I, I guess the way they describe it, it's the oldest rivalry in the state of Indiana. The, the rivalry started in 1903, non-continuous. There was a point in time where we didn't play Crown Point for about eight years. In uh, 98, I believe, we were able to get that first game scheduled and we've been playing it ever since. Right now, we currently own the leather helmet. It's in the uh, trophy case proudly displayed where everybody can see it. I mean, we, we have a countdown clock. As soon as our season ended last year, uh, day after uh, December 1st, you know, you put up there the countdown to how many days to the Crown Point game. It says beat CP. You know, our kids see that. That way they know how long they have until they got to put it on the line for that leather helmet. Uh, it, it's just a great barometer of your season and a great way to kick it off. I think that's what kind of makes the, the, the game so interesting because it's so early in the year 
You know, it'd be interesting to play this game week nine, but it's always a game filled of, of turnovers and jitterness. And, and when you got new kids like for us this year, the game plan really is to make as few mistakes as you, you possibly can, play as hard as you can, and just uh, withstand the game and be there in the end. I totally whiffed on that one. That was our rivalry rush as we take a look at the Lowell Red Devils as they get ready for their week one matchup. Lowell versus Crown Point. Now, I know you got predictions coming up, but give us a tease as to what you think is going to happen. I really think this is, again, a close game because of the fact that both teams have lost significant players. Um, it's never easy for Crown Point to go to the Inferno. You know, they're always on fire there in the Inferno. Um, yes. <laughs> but um, I really think that, um, you know, this is a situation where you've got a little bit more experience for Will Pettit, and how he goes and directs that team tomorrow is going to be a big factor. Now, don't take Alicia the Third for granted. He can play. There's talk that he might not start at quarterback. You know, and he, they may put him out there, a wide receiver, and they have somebody else that's going to throw the ball. Doesn't matter. You've got to cover him. He is a game breaker. So I really think that this is going to be a great matchup. Okay, you mentioned that Crown Point always have problems at the uh, Inferno. Inferno. Everybody yes, that they doesn't do. wear a low yes, uniform do. does tend to have a little problem there. Can Crown Point get it done and win this football game tomorrow? Or will Lowell, who has beaten Crown Point three of the last four times, get it done again this year? Let's say we take it to training camp and find out. Lowell lost three of the best players in the region from last year, but the Red Devils have been known to reload when graduation hits their roster and welcome the challenge this year with a young and hungry team. Coach Kilmer, the good news is great season last season, but bad news, you got a big three you have to replace this year. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's why we coach high school football. We don't get to recruit them. We just take what we get, and it's been pretty fun off season. you know, starting over from scratch. You know, we got one returner on offense and five on defense, so it's like a, a whole new team out there. So that's that's what makes it fun and what makes the profession worth worth doing. What have you liked the most about preseason workouts so far? I, you know, just the enthusiasm of youth. You know, you got a wide-eyed kids. We went up to Merrillville, and I've never seen people so big. But it's just good to see them as the night went forward. They got confidence, and that's what we're looking for each week. Get more confidence, get better, get better, and then, you know, see what happens in the postseason. Now, let's talk a little bit about this year's team. And you had three big-time leaders on last season's team. What about this year? Who's going to be your leader? Well, you know, it starts with, the, you know, the, the kids with experience. You know, John Alisi the third comes back as our uh, starting safety and wide receiver, and we can always throw him at backup quarterback like we did last year. Uh, Trevor Manafina has experience on the offensive line, started maybe a game or two, but started at defensive end all year. So, you know, he's going to anchor that defensive line that we lost – Lost two pretty good guys, but, you know, we we're going to expect him to give that leadership to the young guys that are coming in. On the quarterback position, let's again talk about the kids that are competing for that slot and who's got the upper hand so far. Between the four, you know, I would say they're all pretty close. I'm not going to, you know, Coach Enright's watching. I'm not going to let him know exactly <laughs> who's going to start. But, uh, you know, early on, it's, it's going to be a little bit of quarterback by rotation until one of them really takes hold and takes the position as his own. Okay, before we let you go, confidence-wise, from what you've seen so far this year, where does where does your confidence stand? Well, I mean, I think if you if you're the head coach of the Little Red Devils, you're always pretty confident. We feel like you know if we play tough and we play Red Devil football, we can be in any football game. You know, our kids got to grow up. We understand that, and the quicker our kids grow up, the better they're going to be. We're looking for a great battle. Uh, Friday night and, and, and Crown Point's going to show us what, what we can do and what they can't do and it's going to make us better for week two. So how's that for an answer? <laughs> Crown Point comes into this season with a defense that potentially could be the region's best and a quarterback that's expected to improve from last season. Both will be tested Friday at the Inferno. Now, if we could draw conclusions from the scrimmage you had last week, you guys did well against Penn defensively. Uh, our defense is playing well at the moment. Uh, they, we have a lot of experienced guys coming back up front, uh, and, and I felt like our defensive line and interior linebackers had a nice night. Now, what else did you learn about the scrimmage that makes you happy going into week one? Well, I, I think uh, offensively uh, we're coming along. I, I think our quarterback has uh, done a better job this year. Uh, I think our O-line has uh, improved, and uh, our, our skill guys are uh, 
all experience in their back. And, uh, you know, in the things that we saw in the film uh, offensively, they're very correctable. You mentioned your quarterback, Pettit, has been a starter, I believe, now for three years now. So what does he bring to the table? Well, you know, last year, his sophomore year was his first year, and, I, and there's no uh, question we had some significant growing pains offensively last year. Uh, I think we're past that. Uh, and uh, now it's just cleaning up some of the mistakes that we're making. Um, so it, the, the experience uh, from a year ago has is, is certainly helped us uh, as a group, and especially uh, with Will. How much of an advantage does that give you going into week one against Lowell, in which you have an experienced quarterback, and they are breaking in a new quarterback? Well, I, I'll let you guys draw the conclusions to, to that. You know, I, I think we're just going to control the controllables and do our best to get ready and, and be clicking on all cylinders on Friday night. What's the number one controllable that you have going for you this year? Uh, I think we have an experienced group, and I think uh, they like each other, and I, I, I think they're having fun playing football. How important is this game coming up against Lowell? Uh, it, it's extremely important. Anytime you want to start the season, you want to start it off on the right foot, and I think both communities are really passionate about this rivalry, and uh, we are as well. Lowell has won three of the last four outings with Crown Point. The key to Lowell picking up another win is whether the new guys on offense can figure out the Crown Point defense. Crown Point's running game will be a key in whether the Bulldogs can have a well-rounded offense and get the better of the Red Devils. So, who you got? Okay, Tommy, I got a question for you. Now, yes. you've seen these two teams. What do you do if you were the coach of John Alicia? Do you put him at quarterback and give him touches all the time? You put him at wide receiver where he can get out on the uh, wing. Um, I mean, he's such an athlete. How would you use him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to every question. Uh, you have, okay, you're talking about Cordell Stewart here, right? Yes, sort of like that? That's right. Put him everywhere, confuse the defense. Because yeah. he can hurt you just about anywhere. But I'm going to give you the whistle back and get you out of retirement and ask you the yes. same question. Well, you know, honestly, I believe that your best player has to have the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though if he's going to throw it or whatever, he's got to touch the ball almost every time. And sometimes uh, you can take wide receivers away. Mm -hmm. It's hard to take the quarterback away. Very true. Very true. Should be a great matchup. And here we have keys to the game. Mr. Svetinov, let's go over them. Well, we talked about a lot of these. Uh, I think that for Crown Point, they can't turn the ball over. Lowell is opportunistic. So that's a key there. I think Crown Point can score, mm -hmm. but they can't turn the ball over. And on Lowell's side, I think that they, their defense, must make a statement early. Now, that being said, Crown Point's defense, and again, we're going by one scrimmage, but Crown Point has a tradition of playing great defense. They did well against Penn last week. Right. My question to you is, how difficult will it be for the home team, Lowell, to put points on the board? I think the 21-17 is a good score here for uh, Crown Point winning this one. It's a close game. It's on the road for Crown Point. Um, and uh, this is a big rivalry, so, you know, this is one of our big rivalry weekend uh, shows. There you go. The region is so top-heavy football-wise, we have a big rivalry week one of the season. So, you've got a four-point win for uh, yes, Crown I do. Point. I do. I, I think Crown Point will. You know, and I, co I know that Coach Enright's going, oh, no, don't do this. Please, <laughs> please wait. <laughs> Your record last year was not good. It wasn't that bad. I mean, <laughs> Joe would have things to say about that with that red check mark deal. We have other games we're going to take a look at as well. So let's say go to we way, go to Wayne's World. Way, bro, right? got, I thought that came. Wayne's World this week, and uh, we've got a new cameraman. Kevin, do you even know what Wayne's World is? Okay, he is, he's, he's on board. Yeah, he just All said right. it's a great movie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, Mike Myers isn't calling me yet. Okay, let's go for um, um, let's go for week one. I like Valparaiso over Penn. It's at Valpo. Hold it, and hold I'm it, still hold not really it, impressed. hold it. Is this because you think Valpo is going to win? Because I remember last year. Is this because you think the Vikes are going to win or because you have that I'm not picking pin ever attitude? No, that's Joe. You oh, that's know, Joe. Okay. I'm picking my record. And I, want, I want the Parizo <laughs> to win here. Uh, right. I like Crown Point, as I said, and uh, I like Munster mm. this year. I, I really think that, uh, um, you know, Coach Gifford from Griffith is now the assistant exactly. coach at Munster. That I was a little weird at how that yep, happened. Yep. Yeah. By the way, two teams trying to bounce back from X That's seasons. right. Merrillville, I like their athleticism. They're at home. And Drain's not going to be intimidating. They play there every year in mm -hmm. the first game. One last year. Uh, Joe likes Lake Central to come back here. And uh, 
they've beaten Munster three in a row, so that's why I think Munster's turn is coming uh -huh. up. Okay, but we'll see. I like Hobart over Chesterton. Now, Chesterton does not have their quarterback back, but they've got some good running backs. Pickering is one. Uh, I really think that Chesterton is going to be decent this year, but I like Hobart right now at home. And Mishawaka, I like Portage, but Mishawaka is tough. Mm -hmm. uh, Rensselaer over Kankakee Valley. Hickman and um, Hughes are two outstanding players. I like Hammond, I like Gavitt, and I like Bowman, even though you pick Calumet? No, I'm no. picking, I was messing with you. Okay. <laughs> Calumet, as much as I love what they did last year, and I yeah. love their players from last season, they lost a lot. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they have the tank back. Yeah. Um, Morton uh, over Highland, and uh, uh, Hanover Central over in Chicago. Lake Station plays a close one. It's tough to get a win, mm. though. And I like Whitey. Whitey and Clark is on Saturday, not on Friday. Triton over uh, South Central, and I like Boone over Glenn. Knox and Winnemac, that's going to be a big one. I really think it's a big rivalry. Caston over uh, West Central. I like Newton, I like Caston, and I unfortunately, Tommy, I know I like West Side. We're not talking. Over the <laughs> I'll talk to you. I'm not talking to him. That takes care of the program. You don't just mess with it, right? Anyway, God bless. Thanks for watching us on Prep Football Report. Hopefully, Joe will be back. And he will be back tomorrow. Oh, he will be so back tomorrow? 30, Good. we're on. There you go. Right here to give you all the scores. And we'll be on the radio at 6 o'clock till 10.30. Exactly. So, hope you'll join us for all of that. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. From the perfect flip to the perfect pass, we power Northern Indiana so you can do what moves you.